I'm here with Lily. She's still three weeks out as post her arthroscopic rotator cuff repair. And we are going to be utilizing PNF patterns in order to increase her range of motion, her strength, and her motor control at the end ranges of her range of motion through a progression of her treatment. In the initial three to five weeks that we're going to be seeing her, we're going to use rhythmic initiation and then contract relax techniques. So first I'll demonstrate rhythmic initiation of the D2 pattern. We're using this specific pattern because it is most functional for her as a softball pitcher in the flexion, abduction, and external range of, external rotation range of motion. So I'm gonna get consent for the patient to lift up her arm. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to be to her side and my, contacts are going to be on the thumb side of her hand as well as the posterior lateral part of her humerus and first we're just going to do passive range of motion through the d2 pattern so i'm going to say squeeze my hand here and then we're going to go up and over like this and open it up and squeeze my hand and go up and over and right now something to be aware of is that she only has about 45 degrees of abduction and 35 degrees of external rotation. So we're just going as far as she can with the hopes that we're going to increase this range of motion. So we'll practice passive range of motion for a few times. And then once I feel like she has the hang of it, I'm going to instruct her to actively start doing this with me. So I'm gonna say, pull down and over and squeeze your hand and then go up and over and lift up just like that. And we'll do this for a while and then the next part of the progression would involve resistance and we're going to resist the flexion portion of d2 because this is the piece that we want to gain range of motion in so like i said my contacts are the thumb side as well as the posterior lateral humerus and i'm going to instruct lily to push against me so go ahead, go ahead push up and out up and out open up your hand good 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 and then i will passively bring her back and I'll tell her to do it again. So up and over, up and over. Good. So that's rhythmic initiation. And then we're also going to do a contract relax technique. So we're going to resist internal rotation for this. So I'm gonna start her up in the flexion pattern. And then I'm going to resist her as she comes down into the extension. So I'm gonna say, pull down and over towards your opposite hip. Yep, down, 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 squeeze your hand. Good, 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 good. And then here, I want you to just stay here. Don't let me push you, don't let me push you for about five seconds. Good, and then I'm gonna passively bring her up. And this, for a test retest sign of the D2 flexion pattern should increase her range of motion when we do that. So now we are nine to 11 weeks after Lily's surgery, and we are going to start incorporating some more complex PNF patterns. So first we're gonna start with a scapular PNF pattern. We're going to be doing some posterior elevation. This is a component involved in the D2 flexion pattern that we want to facilitate. So we are going to do combo of isotonics as well as dynamic reversals. So if we start with dynamic reversals of posterior elevation, first I would do obviously rhythmic initiation, get her um, acquainted with that movement, and then we would move into more complex patterns like this. So if I was doing dynamic reversals, I would have my hands here, and I would tell her to push up and back towards me, push up and back, up and back, up and back, good. And then I'd move my hands to be more in the axillary region and I'd say pull down and forward, down and forward, down and forward, up and back, up and back, up and back, down and forward. Good, like that. And that would help with the posterior elevation, as I said, it's a component of D2 flexion. And then after that, if we we're gonna do combo of isotonics in the same movement, I would have the same hand placement and I tell her to push up and back towards me. Push, 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 good. And then hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And then slowly let me win. Slowly let me win. Just like that. And then we are also gonna do the same movements in the D2 pattern. So I'm gonna have her go ahead and flip onto her back. Good. And then I'm gonna take her arm and um, 
make sure I'm positioning correctly. So like I said, we do rhythmic initiation to get her used to this movement before we started these more complex ones. And so if you were gonna do dynamic reversals of the D2 pattern, I would tell her to pull down and towards her opposite hip while closing her hand and then push out towards me. So let's just do that. So go ahead and pull down towards your opposite hip, squeeze my hand, squeeze my hand, squeeze my hand, and then push out and towards me, out and towards me. Open up your hand, good, good, good. And then we'll keep doing that. And then if we were gonna do a combo of isotonics, for the D2 flexion pattern, I would have her in the same position. And then I would just tell her to push up and out towards me. So push, 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 open up your hand, open up your hand. Good, good, good. And then hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And then slowly let me win. Slowly let me win and squeeze my hand as we went back. Um, and this is all going to help facilitate those motions that she's having trouble with, with the external rotation, abduction, and um, flexion. So now I'm going to have you go ahead and stand up. We're going to do a more functional PNF pattern in standing. These are called chops and lifts. So I'm going to have you with your left hand on the bottom of your wrist. I'm going to have you lift up your arm this way. And then I'm going to have you switch your hand and then chop it down like this. Okay? So up is lift and down is chops, like that. Okay, so I'm here with Lily. She is now nine weeks post-op from her rotator cuff repair, and we are gonna start doing some more functional PNF patterns as she gets closer to returning to softball. So we are going to still focus on the D2 diagonal because that is so relevant for her throwing movement, and we're going to incorporate that into some bilateral asymmetrical PNF patterns with the upper extremity. So first, I'm just going to show Lily the movement. So what we're going to be doing is with the ball, we are going to take it down here and then up and across, really rotating at the trunk, bending the knees, and as you can see on the way up, the back arm here is in the D2 flexion pattern, and then down here it comes into extension. So um, I want you to show me that with the ball. Good, and then once she got a hang of that, I wanna add just more of a power component. What I wanna have you do is just take it up the same way you did, but then on the way down, I really want you to Drive the ball into the ground like that, okay? So go ahead and try that. And then really push it down. Good. Really drive it. Good. This is just going to help with the momentum of her throw. And then to make this even more functional and specific for her sports training, we're going to incorporate a lunge. So I'm going to have her do a lunge forward with the left and then take this and do the same chopping motion. And this is relevant because um, in softball, the normal pitch would look something like this. So they'd come in front and then around and they take a little lunge forward like that. So we just wanna make it really specific. So go ahead and let's try that. Good. And then I would be behind her and if you can try it again, I would just be cueing to make sure her hips were staying where I wanted them and that everything was looking good. And then finally, after that, we're gonna advance it one more step and we're gonna do alternating lunges while we do this. So I want you to go forward again and chop, go forward again and chop, okay? Mm -hmm. Good, and then just make sure you're like bending the knee. 